NASA knew the shuttles had to deliver a big scientific breakthrough. And they hoped launching this, the largest and most powerful space telescope ever built, would do it. Three, two, one, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. People were really excited about the idea that this was gonna be this incredible new instrument that would be able to unlock the secrets of the universe. NASA depended on capturing the public's imagination for funding. They desperately needed it to be a success. Max, go. PRS, go fight. EVA, we're go. This is Mission Control Houston. Discovery. Go for Hubble release. Flying 380 miles above the Earth, higher than any shuttle had ever flown before, Discovery deploys the giant telescope perfectly, much to NASA's relief. Thank you for a good day. Three weeks later, Hubble beamed back its first image of a distant galaxy. It's one of these situations where I see it, but I can't believe my eyes. The images were blurry. You know, this is a billion and a half dollar telescope and it can't focus straight. Hubble's optics had been made the wrong shape and it effectively left the telescope short sighted. It's hard to imagine anything more humiliating. It was a really stupid error. Uh, it was something which they could and should have checked. American politicians were furious. The Senate committee told us, NASA, if you are not able to do what you say you can do to repair Hubble and get it back in good condition, there's a good possibility that funding will be cut. But NASA soon realized there was much more to do than just correcting Hubble's faulty lens. A host of other components also needed replacing. Repairing the telescope would be the most complex mission NASA had ever attempted. The repairs were so complicated, the big fear was the astronauts would run out of power and oxygen before they could complete them all. To help them train, NASA even made a giant inflatable telescope complete with an inflatable astronaut. Every aspect of the mission was carefully timed to ensure it could be done before the astronauts' supplies were exhausted. We spent an awful lot of time talking about what if. What if this happens? What if that happens? I knew we had to be ready for anything. Finally, three years after Hubble had launched, on the 2nd of December 1993, the astronauts were ready for their 11-day mission to repair it. Before they leave, the head of NASA gave them a stark warning. He looked at us and he said, I hope that you realize that the future of NASA's human spaceflight depends on the success of your mission. Like, thank you, sir, like we didn't know this. At 4.27 a.m., the shuttle Endeavour blasted off. Lift off the Space Shuttle Endeavour to service the Hubble Space Telescope. And raced to rendezvous with the telescope orbiting 380 miles above the Earth. My big role was going to be to get us in the right position to be able to capture the telescope. Traveling at 17,500 miles an hour, the shuttle joins Hubble in orbit. Commander Dick Covey now has to fly close enough to grab the telescope with the shuttle's robotic arm. When you get close to the telescope, it's intense. You're making very precise maneuvers. One wrong move could have sent the telescope spiraling out of orbit and destroyed it. So we're looking through the top windows of the orbiter until it gets to a point where it transitions low enough to the telescope or a robotic arm to grab it. up there, you guys. And we were very, very happy when we finally got to 
telescope captured. Now we have five days of spacewalks that the whole crew is going to start focusing on. Mission Specialist Story Musgrave and Jeff Hoffman go through the first steps of getting ready for their spacewalk. The first task for the astronauts was to replace some of Hubble's delicate instruments housed deep inside the telescope. We had to open these big doors, and I basically pushed Story underneath, and I would undo the bolts, and he would pull out the unit, hand me the old one, I'd hand him the new one. With limited oxygen and power supplies, Mission Control were focused on sticking to the timetable. I'll never forget that first spacewalk. I was determined to stay on the timeline, do what we needed to do. After seven hours, the astronauts had managed to replace all the faulty instruments. And it worked perfectly, just the way it had done. So we, we were really feeling pretty good. All that remained was for Hoffman to close the telescope doors. That's not closing. The doors aren't closing right. I won't use all the words which went through my mind because we're on television here, but, you know, this is the most complicated mission that NASA has ever undertaken, and I can't get the doors closed. I mean, what is going on? If Hubble's doors remained open, the sensitive electronics inside would be destroyed by the extreme conditions of space. Despite 11 months of preparation, NASA engineers had not planned for this. They kept sending us suggestions from the ground. We were describing the problem, but it was clear that they didn't quite get it because none of the things that they suggested worked. Engineers on the ground were out of ideas. Everything hinged on the astronauts finding a solution. Let's try to get the bottom. Let me get the bottom coming in. Well, Story came up with the idea to take a, a strap to be able to act as another hand, to put it in a place where it could hold part of the doors together while they worked on the other areas to get it to latch. But the concern was, if the strap was pulled too tight, the delicate telescope could be irreparably damaged. The people who were in charge of Hubble were worried because this thing can exert up to 2,000 pounds of force. And I, I think they had these visions of the Hubble collapsing like an aluminum beer can. With the allocated oxygen supplies running out, Mission Control had no choice but to let the astronauts try and use the strap to force the doors shut. As the flight director, I made a decision to tell Story, go do it. If you've got a way to do it, do it. All right. I think we got the door closed. All right. Woo. At last, Hubble's doors were firmly shut. The first marathon eight-hour spacewalk had been a success. Good work, guys. And that was a huge amount of relief in the control center because we got back on track. Going forward, steady right. Over the next four days, the team completed a record-breaking 35 and a half hours of spacewalks. OK, you got to go for relief. And they managed to finish all the repairs to the telescope with just a few hours of oxygen and power to spare. Looks good to me. The astronauts prepared to return to Earth, but they wouldn't know for sure if their mission had been a success for another five weeks. The 13th of January, 1994, Hubble's data was downloaded. I remember just being desperate to see what it was going to look like. When the images finally emerged, they were extraordinary. I'm not an astronomer, but I said, wow, man, we have fixed this thing. Hubble's spectacular pictures would transform our understanding of the universe. I was looking at a huge amount of galaxies in that one picture, crystal clear. I mean, you could see the shapes, and you could tell that they were galaxies. They look like the creations of some psychedelic artists. That was one of the great days of our lives. The most complex shuttle mission ever attempted had been a success.